Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Damon sent me a note. So Steve, check this out. From CNBC, Ryan Brown wrote it. New York Times sues Microsoft chat GPT maker OpenAI over copyright infringement. And other people have filed lawsuits also. In case you don't know about chat GPT and these different AI things out there, what they've done, and this is going to be just an extremely, extremely condensed thumbnail explanation, but they've created these, uh, they call them large language models, where they've actually gone and they've loaded a program with as much as they can find on the internet in terms of books and writings and articles, and they've scraped it all into a place, and then they have a program that goes through it using that model to create answers to prompts given to it. So you can ask it something like, can you summarize Moby Dick for me in three sentences? And uh, someplace deep in its large language model, it probably contains the entire document, Moby Dick, as well as countless reviews of Moby Dick, all kinds of commentary on Moby Dick. And, and so it, it, using that and things that I don't even understand, it then can kick out a response that will read like it was written by a person who knew what they're talking about. Now, we've discussed some of the problems with these systems, but the real question that a lot of people have, and remember, I've written books. I've written like 15, 16 books. And I've got a bunch of books that are out there that are probably in those models, okay? So somewhere along the line, one of my books, or maybe more than one of my books, wound up inside this huge data collection, okay? And if it's being used to create responses and answers to prompts, is my copyright being violated? And I wasn't really thinking it was, because I thought, well, unless somebody actually gave it the prompts, can you please tell me verbatim the entire contents of Steve Leto's book, chances are it would take bits and pieces of it, but it would rework them, wouldn't it, usually? You know, that's what I was thinking. But I've seen lawsuits filed by several people, but now it's the New York Times. And as you can imagine, if something was out there scraping data and stories, if the New York Times is online or available to be scraped, there's a lot of information in the New York Times that probably wound up in that model that would get referenced, for instance, like, you know, things that happened historically. So the publisher said in a filing in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York that it seeks to hold Microsoft and OpenAI to account for the billions of dollars in statutory and actual damages that it believes it is owed for the unlawful copying and use of the Times uniquely valuable works. The Times said in an email statement that it recognizes the power and potential of Gen AI for the public and for journalism, but added that journalistic material should be used for commercial gain with permission from the original source. So if you're going to use their stuff, they say, well, you should pay us. These tools were built with and continue to use independent journalism and content that is only available because we and our peers reported, edited, and fact-checked it at high cost and with considerable expertise, according to the Times. Settled copyright law protects our journalism and content. If Microsoft and OpenAI want to use our work for commercial purposes, the law requires they first obtain our permission. They have not done so. We respect the rights of content creators and owners and are committed to working with them to ensure they benefit from AI technology and new revenue tools said an open AI rep. Our ongoing conversations with the Times have been productive and moving forward constructively, so we are surprised and disappointed with this development. We're hopeful that we will find a mutual beneficial way to work together, as we are doing with many other publishers. A representative from Microsoft did not comment. The Times is represented in the proceedings by a big litigation firm. Uh, one of the attorneys there is also representing author Julian Sancton, and other writers in a separate lawsuit against OpenAI and Microsoft that accuses the companies of using copyrighted materials without permission to train several versions of ChatGPT. The Times is one of the numerous media organizations pursuing compensation from companies behind some of the most advanced artificial intelligent models for the alleged usage of their content to train AI programs. OpenAI is the creator of ChatGPT, a large language model that can produce human-like content in response to user prompts. And how human-like is up for debate. I've seen some things created by it that are obviously written by somebody pretending to be a human. <laughs> it uses billions of parameters worth of information 
which is obtained from public web data up until 2021. Media publishers and content creators are finding their material being used and reimagined by generative tools. Uh, in numerous cases, the content the programs produce can look similar to the source material. Question is, how similar? OpenAI has tried to allay news publishers' concerns. In December, the company said a partnership with Axel Springer, uh, the parent company of Business Insider, Politico, and European outlets, Build and Welt, which would license its content to OpenAI in return for a fee. So they're going to start paying for some of this information. But the financial terms of the deal were not disclosed. In its lawsuit Wednesday, the Times accused Microsoft and OpenAI of creating a business model based on mass copyright infringement, saying that the company's AI systems were used to create multiple reproductions of the Times' intellectual property for the purpose of creating the GPT models that exploit and, in many cases, retain large portions of the copyrightable expression contained in those works. Publishers are concerned that with the advent of generative AI chatbots, fewer people will click through to news sites, resulting in shrinking traffic and revenue. So I guess the question is, if a story is on the front page of the New York Times today, could I go to chat GPT and say, write me uh, something like what the New York Times would have written about what happened yesterday? Now, they say here that the data scraped uh, goes up until 2021, which would sound like it doesn't get the most recent news. But I suppose I could ask ChatGPT, would you please tell me what happened to the Titanic when it hit that iceberg, but tell it to me in the style of the New York Times? Would it just take the New York Times story and just hand it to me? Or would it take information out there and write it in the style of the New York Times? Or would it do a little both? That's the question. The Times included numerous examples in their suit of instances where ChatGPT produced altered versions of material published by the newspaper. But here's the question, how altered? Because if I take something created by somebody else and alter it enough, it's not a violation of copyright because I've transformed it. In one example, the filing shows OpenAI's software producing almost identical text to a Times article about predatory lending practices in New York City's taxi industry. But in OpenAI's version, GPT-4 excludes a critical piece of context about the sum of money the city made selling taxi medallions and collecting taxes on private sales. In the suit, Times said, Microsoft and OpenAI's GPT models directly compete with Times content. And the fact that it left out a critical piece of information is the exact reason why it's still got flaws. And I've seen a lot of stuff created by these different programs. And quite often, they leave stuff out simply because it doesn't have the understanding of what a human would see when shown the prompt. And a human who knows what they're talking about would go, oh, but this has got to be put in context. Whereas ChatGPT goes, well, the context is taxis in New York City. What are you talking about? AI models also limited the time's commercial opportunities by altering its content. For example, the publisher alleges the outputs remove links to products featured in its Wirecutter app, a product reviews platform, thereby depriving the Times of the opportunity to receive referral revenue and appropriating the opportunity for defendants. Times also alleged Microsoft and OpenAI models produce content similar to that generated by the newspaper and that the use of its content to train LLMs, the large language models, without consent, constitutes free riding on the Times' significant efforts and investment of human capital to gather the information. The Times said Microsoft and OpenAI's LLMs can generate output that recites Times' content verbatim, closely summarizes it, and mimics its expressive style. And that's an interesting question. If you said, hey, write me a story about the moon landing, but do it in the style of the New York Times from the 1960s. Would it just go and grab the moon landing story from the New York Times and just modify it a little? Or would it be able to recreate it in that style without using what was in the New York Times? Don't know. And they also accused it of wrongly attributing false information to the Times uh, and depriving the Times of subscription, licensing, advertising, and affiliate revenue. And, you know, when I first heard the lawsuits getting filed against these companies over this, my first thought was, well, it depends on what they do with the information. So if, and I'm not even sure which of my books are online in the sense that they can be scraped for this information, I don't even know. 
But I know a lot of this stuff is out there, like newspapers, for instance, have been digitized. Many, many, many newspapers have been digitized. And so this information is out there. So if the information gets scraped and put into this large language model someplace, and somebody asks a question, a prompt, and this thing uses that information in its answer, that's not necessarily a violation of copyright. If I ask you a question and you go, oh, I've got the answer to that somewhere right here. Hang on. Um, there's a Finnish man named William Nara who ran a photo studio nearby, and he visited the Italian hall and photographed what he saw. And you answer the question like that. It's not a violation of my copyright. It's one sentence out of my book. Now, I'd like it if you said, oh, by the way, I got that from Steve Leto's book. That'd be nice. But the statement that there's a photographer in Calumet in 1913 named William Nara, who's Finnish, who took photographs, anybody who's ever studied the Italian Hall knows that because the photographs he took are world famous. I mean, they're, they're, they're famous photographs. And everyone knows that. Now, the way I had phrased it was me. And so if somebody were to actually take that sentence verbatim and put it, like, say, into an article they wrote, and I saw it, I'd be a little bummed out. And I can tell you, by the way, that I can point to two different writers who've written about the Italian Hall who've plagiarized sections of my books just willy-nilly. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, but they plagiarize them in ways that are not necessarily copyright violations, and, and there's a fine line. I'm not going to get into it. But that kind of stuff happens all the time. But I suspect that, you know, I've heard about, like, for instance, comedians suing because their books were somehow stuck in there. And so if you ask ChatGP, for instance, to uh, write some jokes in the style of, it'll just kick back jokes that person actually wrote, possibly. That might be one of the things it does. Might be. And so here, the New York Times is saying, well, if our entire collection, body of work, is in there, being used for answers to questions, especially prompts regarding do this in the style of the New York Times, um, makes you wonder. The, the, the big question I still have, I've done several articles about this, is the number of attorneys out there who <laughs> will ask ChatGPT or equivalent to write them a brief and cite cases. And it doesn't occur to the attorneys that asking this program to cite cases, it might make up cases. And I, I'm puzzled as to why the creators of that program can't insert some kind of step in the process that says if you're going to cite a source or a case or something, that that's got to be real. Because I'm assuming that ChatGPT and the other large language models must have cases in their database, right? In, in the large language model, doesn't that contain cases? Because cases are online. Didn't they include that? So isn't the entire body and text of Miranda versus Arizona in there? And so when it's writing a brief and it makes up a case, is ChatGPT considering its answers to be pure fiction? And if it is, I think that's kind of strange. I would have thought you could actually just make one little change in the programming and say, okay, when you're citing a case or a source, it's got to be real. Apparently not. But we'll see what happens here. Uh, there's some speculation that they might work out a deal because that's what they did over in Europe with the other news sources. So it could be a licensing deal of some sort. But Damon, thanks for sending it, my friend. Happy New Year and to everyone else as well. CNBC published that by Ryan Brown. New York Times sues Microsoft. The chat GPT maker, OpenAI, over copyright infringement. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. I had the right to remain silent, but I didn't have the ability.